Hey guys, this is Generic Person here, back with another video. So, in this video, I'm going to show you how to format a flash drive in Linux. So, let's get to it. So, the first thing you want to do is that you want to open up a terminal. Unless you're already on the command line, you don't need to do this because we need to type in some commands. Now, of course, if you think this is just going to be easy and just like, I click this, let's say, uh, click, I don't know, disk manager, and like, find the device I want to use, like flash drive, or let's say, and then we can just click format. It okay, honestly, that will work, but this is a more universal method. So, we're going to have a terminal open. So... So what you want to do is then second, step two is to type in a less space forward slash dev forward slash sd then question mark. I'll have this down in the description. Or you can type this. Either one would work. So in the event we see sda and that's almost in every scenario you're just going to see sda you need to ignore this. This and this and all this as well. So, excuse me. So you need to ignore SDA as though that's your computer's internal hard drive. You do not want to mess with that. No, no, but we want to mess with this in, our ca in this case. However, if it's like, if it says like SDC or SDD or whatever, then it may be most likely you have several disks attached to your system. <coughs> so to check the size, uh, so to check to see if it's an actual disk, because in some cases, depending on what type of computer you have, I have an old desktop that it shows like SDB, SDC, all that stuff. Those are really on disks connected to the system, and they're probably just like hard readers or some sort. That may happen, but if you just want to format one drive, you have to do one at a time. So, if you want to format just one drive, then SDB should be your ch target. Otherwise, you need to figure it out. And if you know the size of the drive you want to format, then you can try figuring it out by using ls blk, this command. And it also display the size, so you, you can find a size, say, I have a 32-bit, 32-bit, ugh, I can't speak today, <laughs> sorry. I meant 32 gig gigabyte, sorry. So I'm apparently using the wrong words. So if you, y if you have a 32-bit, there we go again. <laughs> So if you have a 32 gigabyte, I'm sorry, flash drive, it may look like this. It's not always just gonna have like its labeled capacity. It's all it's somewhere around there. So okay. So now note note that if your disk or device, I should say, looks like this, then you wanna type in S U D O sudo space again. I also have this command in the description. F D I S K space four slash D E V dev four slash S D and then obviously it's gonna be the device. In in our case S D B. I already have it open up here, so yeah. So what we want to do is. First of all, before we're going to do any formatting, you want to make sure it's unmounted. So, in this case, it's not, so it would be good. So, and make sure you also, well, if, if you encounter a situation like in my example, you want to just, it's most likely they're not going to be any files off it, on it. If you just like, if and if you notice there are multiple partitions on the disk, you only want to have one. Here's an easy method on how to just um, just delete the disk and 
um, add a petition. So you want to type in. So if you want to know all the commands, you type. You can type in m for help, as it says here. Some of these commands will only be known in a few. So we want to be able to know this command, this command, or this command. And we also need to know here yeah, just N G and capital no lowercase G sorry and O O lowercase O sorry again these are all the commands will be down in the in the description below so so first of all what we want to do is that we have right here we have many options we're only going to be focusing on this option and this option. Oh. So, so we want to in this in our case we want to create a GPT partition table rather than a DOS partition table. Because, okay, let me explain the difference between GPT and DOS. GPT is a much newer standard and stands for GUID partition table. And GPT, it works with disks that are more in two terabytes of size. And it works with Windows 10, modern versions of GNU plus Linux, or as I've been saying, Linux. While a DOS partition table is basically MBR. MBR. So, MBR works with Windows eight version, Windows versions eight point one and below, so Windows eight point one, Windows eight, Windows seven, Windows Vista, Windows XP, etc., etc. However, MBR or in this case, what it, as it says here, the DOS partition table. Like I said, you'll be able to use it. Well, you'll be able to use it with anything. You'll be use able to use it with just almost all any single version of Windows. Even Windows 10 will work with it. However, it does not support um, two disks that are more in two that are greater than two terabytes of size. It does not support disks up to that capacity. It may not be likely that you're using a device using m that is more than two terabytes, but in the event you are, then you you need to use GPT. If you're wondering what this, what this and this is, what those t two options are, you don't need to worry about them. You don't need to worry about them. So to sum it up, GPT is new only supports Windows 10, although, well, I guess Windows 8, well, Windows 8.1 and other versions, they may not display, if you go into the disk management application, it may not display properly. So, you're better off using DOS if you need support with those operating systems. So, you need GPT for... <coughs> You can use GPT for disks that you n disk that are going to be more than two terabytes in size. For if you just if you don't need compatibility with Windows 8.1 and, and below, if you just need compatibility with Windows 10 and some modern versions of Linux and other operating systems that do support GPT, well, you need DOS if well. If you you can use DOS if you do need compatibility with auto operating systems. Oh, and one more thing, DOS this partition table it does not support more than four partitions. You can make an extended partition as a little hack. While GPT, I heard that yeah, the limit let's just say varies by operating system. So yeah, so that's another thing. So. But it's less likely that you'll be using a a disk with more than one partition. So you wanna 
So it, in this case, we'll be using GPT. So, but if you do need DOS, typo, well, just go with GPT or G, type G. So type G, hit enter. So don't worry about what it says. Just as long, well, don't worry about this here. You may want to write this down if you also may need this, but it's most likely you may not need it. So if it says create a new GPT disk label, then you should be good to go. So, <coughs> so then what we want to do is type N and then hit enter. So if you're going to work with multiple partitions, we can leave the default to one. So type in one, hit enter. Then first sector, just leave it as the default. Last sector, just leave it as the default. And don't worry if it says Linux file system. Linux file systems, it would mainly be like ext4, extended4, something like that on modern Linux systems. However, as far as I know, it works with Linux. Linux file systems extend it for they only work with well of course Linux and probably maybe FreeBSD I'm not saying it does it may you can go ahead and try it out you can test it I don't know about FreeBSD all I just know is Linux for now so if it says create it a new partition one of type Linux file system and size of this so if you just need one partition, this should work out great. Otherwise, you may need to like type in um, a sec. Um, you may need to um, fool around with the first and last sector. You can always just search that up. So this creates one partition, and right now we're just going to be done. So let's press W to. Um, to write the changes to the disk and exit. And if it says that the old partition table is still in use by the kernels, or saying, or basically if it says something about rebooting, then pretty much you need to reboot before you do any further changes. Once you reboot, then go ahead and follow the, then go ahead and follow on. So that's if you want to just like um, delete every single partition and just revert back to one partition that covers the whole entire disk. Or, of course, there are many more disk utilities such as part ed, P-A-R-T-E-D, and so on. But for now, we'll be using F-Disk. So, we're not finished yet. Well, we didn't even get on to step three. So, so now we can exit out of here. So let's go on and type in S U D O space M K F S dot V F A T. You can like like mess them out with like different file systems if you want, but this should if you need compatibility with Linux, Mac OS, Windows Maybe even FreeBSD, I think, possibly. Then you may want to use FAT32 or, as it says here, VFAT, something like that. And I think a label would probably use dash L. Let's go check. So if we want to make a label, you can always look at the manual page and I need to. Okay. So let's double check. So. These are just a number of different options. So if you need other options, you can also like visit the manual page here. However, I don't see any type of, I don't think. I see. Yeah, I don't see to like, anything about labeling like the name of the disk. Anyways, you can look at the menu page that shows and explains all the different options. So, 
So let's do pseudo mkfs, pseudo space mkfs dot vfat, and we're also putting out any extra information we need to know. That should be for slash dev, for slash sdb in our case, whatever domains you want to use. So then you got to type in your password. Let me go do that real quick. Okay, so as you see, note that here's a little fun fact. When typing in your password, you won't see anything display. This is done for security purposes. So it looks like that everything passed. If you want to, if you just need support with Linux systems and potentially other systems that support the Linux file system, then you can go ahead and use mkfs.ext4 and to do a label with mkfs.ext4 once again i have the links in the in the description this basically you can do dash l and then label name or device name so right now we're done we're almost finished this is step that was step three on how this is how we format it, and it looks like we can uh, create a file, and so on. So, let's create a file. Let's create a new f uh, text file. So, we have our document here, right? So, oh, I see this truck is. Okay. <coughs> so, this, this is a... Uh, Sample file. This sample file. Let's save it. This is an example file. Like I just type it. And so let's try to copy, copy it, and yay, we can paste. Oh, there we go. There we go. So yeah, by this point. If you're able to paste and move files and so on, let's go to my documents and paste this. Paste the URL. What the? Oh, okay. So, on my distribution, I'm able to use a flash drive without having to do any changes. However, if you can't find yourself, if you if you're unable to copy or paste. Well, if you're unable to create anything on the drive or paste anything, then here's a little fix. So, if you wanted, what you want to do is that we're going to unmount. Let me unmount this. So, if necessary, unmount it. You can do, like, I guess you could also probably do, like, sudo umount. I have, again, once again, the links will be in the description. So sudo umount for slash dev for slash sd. Then I'll use x as an example. So this is like replace x with like the type of device name or a device name, a uh, device you, you, you're using. So in this case, sdb1 or the petition, whether that's 2 or 3 or 9 if applicable. <laughs> so you could do that. It may work or not work depending on your GNU plus Linux distribution or Linux distribution, I should say. So, so here's what you want to do. So, now that we've created a petition, now that, say, if you have one petition that you're going to be using using a lot, so here's what you want to do. So, let's go ahead and go. And let's go into our home directory. You can type in cd and then this character. I don't know what it's called. I'm sorry. So, or you could do cd home cd, then the username. 
So then, so we're gonna be in our home directory, and then let's do type in the following command: mkdir space mnt. So hit enter. Then let me clear the screen. So then type ls to make sure it's in the right um, directory. And don't worry about all this Trinity log stuff. I'll take care of that. So what you want to do is then type in sudo space mount forward sa uh, space forward slash dev forward slash sdb1. Again, we're using sdb1 in our case. So then space mnt. You need to type in your password and sudo is required. So let me go do that. So, and note that if you get an error like this, then so it the you may not. So then you may want to double check if you get an error like something like this. So let's go ahead and check. So, so it's apparently SDB. So we the whole drive is apparently as one. So sometimes that may happen. That's okay. So we need to replace SDB one in sorry in SDB one as SDB. So then it should work. So there may be a I think there's a dash V option. If you want it to be a verbose, you can use a dash V or dash dash verbose option if applicable. So you wanna mount you wanna run that command. And we can see the M and T, and there's no nothing in here. So, so yeah, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and go to the M and T. So, if so, you may usually like mount it in in like four slash media, four slash username, four slash mount or I mean like device name or maybe just like a random string of numbers and letters and so on if you didn't put a label so you what you want to do is type in C H O W N space and then the username your username in this case Avery is our username so and then space and mint this will Oh yeah, that's why right. you also have to like do. S you have to y you have to be in your home directory. Sorry about that. Like or whatever directory, so you can't be in MNT. So let's run the command again, and and you must do like sudo. Sudo. C H O W N to make this work properly. However, in my case, it does work without having to do that. On my laptop, I do have to do that, but then everything should be good if if it, if that for some reason still does not work then well just let me know in the comments below so yeah so now you can go ahead and close out your terminal but before you do that let me unmount the drive let me unmount our mnt folder let me type in my password real quick Okay, so then we can also optionally do this. It would be have to like the device name. So this is what I do sometimes. Oh, oops, I meant sudo. So if it says eject succeeded, then you can then the device is no longer recognized. Well, 
then you're good to go. But here, let's see if we remove. Just wait until it says you're all good. We should be all good, though. Let me refresh my desktop. Uh, yeah. Or y you can just simply unplug it from your system. But I recommend on mounting first. And if applicable, doing like an eject command. So, yeah. Then you can now type exit if you're using the desktop environment. Or that's pretty much. Actually, that's just pretty much it for now. Just delete this file. So, hopefully, you found this tutorial helpful. Hopefully, f so, yep. Hopefully, you found this tutorial helpful. And, yep, this is a generic person here, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.